Hey guys, TopCon here. Let's start with something I call Pivot Micro. Pivot Micro is basically a form of micro that I never saw anyone else using. Maybe it's because they didn't realize it's a thing. Boats like this one here that have two cones and can fire one shot to each side can actually be microed in a way to allow them to fire nearly twice as fast. Just watch. You can issue an attack command on something and then pivot it 180 degrees and it will fire from the other side. So in a fight you can keep pivoting your boats to switch sides and your boats will be firing much more. It's a little harder to pull off the more boats you have, but you can still do it with any boat like this. Let's take a look at some of the siege unit things I feel that people probably missed. I think a lot of people didn't even know this, but if you just held the right click button, you could actually force your siege unit to unpack anywhere. Yeah, you could also hold right click on top of the siege unit and you could use it to rotate it and change the direction of the cone. Also, if it's in a position like this, if you use the hold position key, yeah, the unit will not unpack itself and it'll just stay there and keep firing. One last tip I have is that for the trebuchet, if you pack and unpack it, the trebuchet will actually fire faster than if you just left it. Just watch here and you can see the difference in the timings of the shots if you pack and unpack versus just letting the unit do its animations. So let's take a quick look at the monks. There's a few notes I have here. Uh, the first is that the cooldown of the relic is actually tied to the relic itself and not to the monk. What this means is that if you use it and drop it and then pick it back up, it will still be on cooldown. What this also means is if you delete the monk mid-cast, you can pick it up again and it won't be on cooldown. So if you didn't like the way that your convert is going, you can basically have one relic and a few monks, you could recast it. Uh, it's not always useful, but it can be a good thing and you can also use it as like a zoning technique with your monks. Another thing a lot of people missed is that monks can only convert up to 200 population. Anything past that, all the extra units will die. Uh, you can see that here. And I'm not sure which units are prioritized when converting. I uh, see here that this knight, it runs in, and later I still get it, even though clearly the villagers were in there first, and all the villagers were dying. And one more thing, in this clip specifically, the enemy monk is not killed or converted, so it appears that enemy monks are immune to conversions. So I think most people realize that there's no decay on the meat when animals die in this game, but I didn't see very many people stacking deer corpses. If you have a scout or any unit really, you can still push the deer like this, uh, basically the same as Energy of Empires 2, just takes a lot more time. And you can stack up the deers and then kill them, and then you can kind of get them into a little square, and that's where you're going to put your mill afterwards. Your villagers don't have to walk back and forth to get all the food. Because it's very APM intensive, you probably won't get to do this a lot, but on island maps, where you don't have very much to do at the start and your scout's not doing a lot anyways, it's very easy to do that. You can also use this to, if you ever see an enemy that they've milled the deer. If they didn't kill those deer, you can use your scout to start pushing the deer away and then kill them so that it's very far away. Then their villagers have to walk really far and they get inefficient gathering from the food. And let's take a quick look at the boar. Uh, boars can be hunted with as little as four villagers if you micro them properly, but it's a lot easier if you use eight. Eight is also the maximum number of villagers that can harvest from a boar at one time. And if the boar kills a unit, it often will just reset. Uh, so you definitely don't want to lose a villager to it. And when the root are finally out. If you'll notice, the Roos outpost can actually hold eight units, so I believe that dropping them on top of the boars, like when you're going to hunt them, you can always protect all eight. It's going to be a really, really big advantage for the Roos being able to garrison all eight of those villagers. So there was a ton of very useful hotkeys, and some that might be a little bit hidden, especially for someone who wasn't very familiar with the Age of series. For example, holding the shift button when making units at any production structures will actually create five at once. So if you hit shift plus Q, you can see here that I create five units at one time by pressing one button. If you have five structures selected, it will actually spread it out so it'll be one at each structure. If it's just one structure, then all five will go to that same structure. Another very useful hotkey tip is to spam control shift and V at the start of the game. This is the select all villager hotkey so you can task them without having to box select them at the start basically it just auto selects them and you can right click right away on the sheep or wherever you plan to send them and you can even press h and q right after that it'll automatically select your town center and make a villager right away some of the other more obvious and also very good hotkeys were selecting all your military units which of course selects all your military units and monks wherever they are on the map there's also select idle villager which jumps your screen to an idle villager there's no town bell in age of empires 4 but if you do select a few villagers and you press this button here uh, the default hotkey is g they will actually go for safety to the nearest garrison. And you can bind another hotkey in the settings here, and this one will actually tell the villagers to go back to work wherever they are garrisoned from. They'll, they'll leave the structure. You don't even have to select the building. They will just go back to work, whatever they used to be doing. So there you have it. That's my five uh, gameplay tips. I'd be kind of surprised if you knew all five of them, because to me, a lot of these did not seem super obvious. Let me know if there's any cool gameplay tips you found, or if you didn't know any of these ones, tell me which one was the most useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again with more Age of Empires 4 content in the future.